Hello, everyone. Welcome to the panel discussion, Increasing the MSCA in Incoming Mobility in Croatia, a policy development perspective in the context of the Croatian research and innovation in higher education reforms. My name is Tomislav Stojanov. I'm a Marie Curie postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Nottingham, UK, and I will be moderating this session. I greet you, all of you here, um, both in the hotel conference room, as well you uh, in front of your uh, screens. Mm. Before we begin, uh, a brief acknowledgement. Um, this session is being streamed, as you know. Um, so I believe um, being here physically, you give us your consent to take photos and to um, make recordings of this session. One of the most important documents in Croatia is the National Development Strategy accepted by the Croatian Parliament in February this year. It's been written to set objectives on how we would like for Croatia to look like in the year 2030. This is the fifth national strategy that describes, among others, research and innovation and higher education, and the very first in which something tremendously important has been written and because of which we have gathered here. The National Development Strategy has declared that the, the first document that the fundamental value in the research sector are, guess what, researchers. This topic of researchers' mobility um, was actually one of the central R&I subjects during the Croatian presidency of the Council of the EU in 2020. There was a round table with the title Brain Circulation, which resulted in the document Zagreb Call for Action on Brain Circulation. For those of you interested, what four actions were emphasized to foster the brain circulation in the EU especially the so-called new EU countries, visit the link um, on the screen. What does this actually mean to have researchers in the center of science policy? I don't have an answer, but some of my panelists might help us here. I assume it has something with brain circulation or researchers' mobility, which is why I have invited my guests, representatives from various stakeholders, to share their thoughts on this topic. Since we're going to have um, brand new sectorial acts in Croatia very soon, it is the right time to discuss this issue. I'm so happy that all my panelists I had initially invited in the first place, responded positively. So I th thank them all for that. Unfortunately, uh, as you have already heard, one of our panelists, State Secretary of the Minister of Science and Education, Ivica Shushak, uh, apologized for not being able to come. It was too late for me to ask him to make a recorded presentation for us. Also, early this morning, uh, Nenat Turk, uh, dean of the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine uh, informed me he was not feeling well. We wish him fast recovery. Let me now present all my panelists. You can applaud them uh, after I finish presenting them all. I will start with uh, Martina Hartl, a deputy head of the International Research Cooperation and Science Diplomacy at the Department of the Federal Ministry for Education, Science, and Research of the Republic of Austria. She couldn't join us online, but she made a 18 minute long uh, presentation for us that uh, we'll be uh, see very soon. Did you know that Austria is one of the most successful EU countries uh, when it comes to research and innovation? I'm especially eager to, to hear from her because the Austrian model is one of the models for the next Croatian sectorial legislation. 
I've asked her also several specific questions, and she uh, um, kindly answered um, those in the second part of her presentation. You'll be able to ask uh, the questions to her, so we will. Uh, she is eager to uh, answer. Sasha Zelenika is um, on the left. The left uh, uh, chair is vice. Director for Strategic Projects at the University of Rijeka. I'm very curious what uh, Vice Director Zelenika is going to say because not only he was State Secretary of the Minister of Science and Education some 10 years ago or something, but he's also a returning researcher to Croatia. Welcome aboard. Neven uh, Zhitomir Barisic in the middle has a dual affiliation at the Faculty of Science of the University of Zagreb and at the Institute of Solid State Physics, uh, Vienna University of Technology. Professor Barisic uh, has been invited to share his personal story as an outstanding researcher with an active ERC consolidator grant with a great wish to continue his research career uh, in Croatia. Welcome, Professor Barisic. And Sandra Vidovic, um, it's a person that many of you uh, already know her. She's the national uh, contact point for MSCA postdoctoral fellowships at the Agency for Mobility of the Ministry of Science and Education. This means she knows, um, as no one here, um, on the issues of the European Commission's most prestigious uh, funding program, MS, MSCA Postdoctoral Fellowship, its infrastructure, the creation data in Horizon 2020, the researchers' mobility issues, prospects, etc., etc. By working with numerous MSCA applicants and grantees for years, she has collected rich experience on this issue, and I'm looking forward to hearing um, her presentation. Good to see you again, Sandra. And last but not least, thank you for joining us at this uh, Marie Curie Sklodosa uh, Association um, Croatian chapter event, either physically or uh, virtually. So, welcome everyone. Your questions and comments are welcome after the presentations from the panelists. For those of you here in the conference hall, please wait for the microphone, and don't forget to introduce yourself to us. If you are in front of the YouTube screen, uh, you can contact us uh, well uh, by email, msmcaa.hr at gmail.com. Um, we will publish the answers from Martina Hartl uh, later on, I believe, in the YouTube uh, comments area. First, I would like to start with uh, Martina's presentation to give us a broader international context before we delve more into national issues. Good morning, dear ladies Good morning, and gentlemen, dear ladies and gentlemen and dear participants of the, of the Alumni Curie Association Alumni event in Croatia. I'm very happy to be with you today, even if it's only in a virtual setting. My name is Martina Hartl. I'm from the Austrian Federal Ministry of Education, Science and Research. And I hope that my presentation will be useful for you. Um, and I will try now with sharing my slides with you. What I actually wanted to start with is give, to give you a short overview of how the current situation for Austria in Horizon um, 2020 look, looks like. As you can see um, within Marie Curie, um, we had more than 480 projects where we have participated and Austria was able to get more than 115 50 million euros out of Horizon 2020. Um, in this area. 
you can also see that within the societal challenges we have um, done quite well. Um, in all in all, Austria was quite successful in Horizon 2020, and we hope that we can also um, prolong this success in Horizon Europe. Um, from the 38 corporations within excellent science that we had uh, between Austria and Croatia, um, unfortunately, uh, only 10 came from Marie Sklodowska Curie actions, but I hope that uh, maybe this can be improved for the uh, years to come. So I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the general support structure now for Horizon Europe in Austria. In principle, we have a centralized structure with most of our NCPs anchored in the Austrian Research Promotion Agency, the FFG. We have a quite good cooperation and communication between the ministry delegates in the program committees and the NCPs of the FFG. Um, they serve as our experts and they provide support and input also from an operational perspective and from the experience since they have um, with the proposal submitters. Um, also the delegates together with the FFG form national consultation groups um, for the different program areas and the missions. The universities also have large and also the larger research organizations are providing additional support via their international offices. I also wanted to give you um, some selected examples how we foster the participation uh, in Horizon Europe. Uh, in our new STI strategy, uh, we concretely refer to the goal of increasing Austria's participation in Horizon Europe and our R&I pact that was approved together with the strategy um, features a number of activities in this respect. For example, targeted financial support for institutions that are applying, um, the active uh, participation of Austria in now also shaping the new European research area priorities. We are actively involved in the um, new S3 roadmap deliberations, and we are currently also seeing where Austria could participate. We are also promoting smart specialization on different federal and on federal and state levels. And we specifically are also encouraging participation in selected important projects of common European interest, such as in microelectronics and batteries. And we also support the participation in 13 RTI partnerships in Horizon Europe. The ministry, our ministry that is responsible for the higher education sector, negotiates specific performance agreements with all public universities and also with selected research organizations such as the Academy of Sciences and the IST Austria. And there also the participation in the framework program is explicitly stated as a goal. In the 2022 to 2024 period, we will focus on participation in the clusters and as coordinators. Most of our universities and key research organizations provide support in the preparation and the administration of EU projects. And also in a number of cases in our performance agreements, the EU-wide initiatives such as S3 projects or the European universities are concretely part of the um, university um, performance agreements. I also wanted to give you some selected examples from the Recovery and Resilience Fund. As you're all aware, where the Recovery and Resilience um, Fund will um, support um, loans and grants to organizations in order to um, recover from the effects of the pandemic. 
And in Austria, money will also go to selected projects in R&I. And these are the contribution to multilateral EU initiatives related to hydrogen and microelectronics. Then we will support a specific Quantum Austria initiative. We will um, dedicate money to a new Austrian Institute of Precision Medicine. And we will boost the digital infrastructure of our universities. But then I've also been asked to um, answer some specific questions, which I will now try to do. Um, one was on the ERC performance and how Austria has managed um, to achieve such a high number of ERC grantees. Well, the honest um, answer to that is that this has been a long-term process. We have not been successful from the beginning but we have uh, taken some specific measures. In that respect, you also have to be aware that not all of your institutions will be able to achieve getting an ERC grant in, on the first or second try. You have to accept that there is only a handful of organizations that are carrying your performance. Also, as said, we have included related goals in our performance agreements. And so these institutions have made it a priority. And this has led to specific support structures within our universities and research organizations, such as mentoring or submission support that now can also be used in the future. And the ERC grants are, of course, also an attractive scheme for the institutions themselves to win um, financially and also regarding the reputation of the grant for the organization. Um, legal issues are not playing a significant role here when it comes to ERC performance. Um, I've also been asked to talk about brain drain specifically and how serious this issue is and how we are also preventing brain drain. The answer for that is that overall, we are facing similar issues regarding brain drain than many other countries, but they might not be as severe as in the new member states, but we're not having concrete statistics on that. The main countries that Austrian researchers are going to are Germany and Switzerland and the UK. What I wanted to tell you, however, is that we have some sector specific issues of brain drain, and you might well be aware of the issue of medical education in that sense. Um, in Austria, for example, 79% of German um, and 57 of medical students from other countries turn their back on Austria after completing their studies, which of course is a huge loss in human resources and money. And this is also why we have started the quota discussion for a specific percentage of Austrian um, students to, to be um, obligatory. Um, we have no specific statistics on MSCA individual fellows, but according to our NCP, the majority of individual fellows are returning to Austria. And in addition, we have a lot of incoming ERC and MCA fellows that are working in Austria via those schemes. And finally, the Austrian Science Fund, FAF, offers a number of possibilities for young researchers, such as the START program or the Esprit Career Advancement for postdocs or the Young Independent Researcher Groups program. For that, you can see also the website of our um, Austrian Science Fund. I've also been asked um, to answer a specific question regarding to the seal of excellence. And um, I think this is easy to answer. It is true that Austria does not have a seal of excellence scheme for MSCA. But in fact, we have not implemented any seal of excellence. One reason is that our structural funds from which the co-financing is intended, they are relatively low. And the other is that administration of these funds is quite complex due to the responsibilities of our Bundesländer, our federal states in implementing these funds. 
However, some organizations have individually decided to support such projects at their own costs. And at the moment, for example, the University of Graz is intending to do so for MSCA individual fellows and have also integrated that in the performance agreement with the ministry. Again, it is mainly the, our science fund that is running specific programs for the support of early career researchers and mobility, such as the Erwin Schrödinger Fellowship that is including a return phase and the Esprit Career Advancement for postdocs. I've also been asked to, to talk a little bit more about the strengths and weaknesses of our R&I system and if Austria can really be seen as a, as a model for, for R&I and what have been our major challenges. So I'll start with the strength of our system and I base my information on an OECD review that has been done in 2018, where um, the OECD has stated that we have um, increased remarkably our investment in R&D, that this rapid expansion of R&T inputs was also matched by an increase of human resources and the scientific output of our universities has also grown at a steady pace. We are good, for example, in the fields of quantum communication and information. Vienna has become a major biotech hub in Europe and Linz is the same for mechatronics and Graz is really um, well known for the automotive and production technologies. We're also home to a number of companies which are world leaders in certain technology fields and niche markets. We're also quite good in, in smart grids. And um, furthermore, um, we have gained some significant policy expertise um, for STI policies and for government funding um, of business R&D in Austria which is significantly above OECD average. However, um, the OECD review has also given us a number of points that we have to work on. And this is, for example, the efficiency of our investments and how to better transform um, our high level of investments into productivity growth. Also, we still need to steer our system towards excellence and especially building an internationally excellence research system. Um, I will not run through, through all the examples, but also um, we still need to work on our um, human resource base, especially in the area of innovation and disruptive technologies. And we need to increase the contribution of science to innovation. With regard to, to our policy mix, also the OECD has given some um, specific recommendations, for example, on how to, to structure our um, advisory councils and to merge them. But um, as I said, I'm not go gonna go in detail of all of that. We have new developments in our R&I systems, namely we have um, adopted in December 2020 a new R&I strategy. Um, we have also adopted a related R&I pact for the first three years of this strategy that lists a number of measures and the concretely involved institutions and also gives the financial background and funding for these years. Um, you can see all these documents also, and um, most of them are also available in English. And finally, we are also working on an update of our federal statistic law with view to opening data for research, which is quite complex due to the data protection guidelines, but this is really also a very important issue that not least um, in times of the pandemic has shown that we really need access to those um, research data. 
the last point um, I will touch upon is the ethical system and how our ethical system in Austria looks like. Um, I will give you two specific examples in this respect. We do not have a formal Austrian wide ethical codex, but of course, beyond also respecting, um, for example, charter and code at the universities, we also have a best practice guide for research, integrity and ethics, where all our major stakeholder organizations have been involved in drafting it. And these guides cover issues like um, the preparation of research data, the facilitation of open access and open science, but also um, guidelines for consulting activities, um, the enhancement of public involvement, or the promotion of equal opportunities and diversity. Um, you can see an English version online and I hope this can be useful for you. Finally, we also have an Austrian agency for research integrity, uh, where our universities and universities of applied sciences and research organizations are members on a voluntary basis. And this agency focuses on prevention, advising, training, investigation, and networking. The member organizations and individuals from our member organizations can approach the agency to report issues, to get advice or to ask for assessments. With view to academic freedom of researchers, they can also approach the agency, for example, in cases of co-authorships or pressures to focus on certain research topics, but the agency is not responsible for issues di directly related to the employment contract um, of those people. Um, with that, I am at the end of my presentation. Um, I hope that the topics I've raised are of interest for you. And as said, I will be happy to receive uh, questions from you also to my email address, and I will try to answer them to my best knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martina. Um, just to remind the info, uh, questions for Martina can be sent to to the uh, email address mcaa.hr at gmail.com. Now, I would like to ask Sandra. She already has taken the floor. Sandra will uh, feed us with uh, lots of data in order to give us a um, quantitative overview in crash regarding incoming mobility of researchers. Uh, please. Hello, good afternoon to everybody, and thank you, Tomislav, for the nice introduction. I am very happy to be here on this hybrid event, and I am very happy to see you all in this room. And I must admit, we missed it all, <laughs> especially we, the NCPs, who are used to giving the presentation and the info days. So let's hope that the, that the situation will be uh, even better in forthcoming months. So, as uh, Tomislav said, I will a little, uh, I will bother you, let's say it like that, a, a little bit with statistical data regarding the mobility patterns in Croatia in uh, Horizon 2020 uh, pro uh, program implementation, which is from the 2014 to 2020. So, as for the beginning, I would like to start with a disclaimer. Why? Because uh, it was very hard for me to get all the data in my place because we don't have some kind of uh, unique uh, database for the uh, mobility of the researchers. So I use the data that, uh, that are available for the European Commission regarding the creation participation in Marie Curie actions. Also, this data I, uh, we upgraded with my contacts of the, of the researchers. We used the NUFEL Pro co-fund statistic data for the results of first, second, and the third call. And of course, we use the data from the program, which is the project of the returning creation scientists to their homeland. And of course, we also use the data regarding the Ministry of Science uh, uh, data on hosting the foreign researchers uh, in Croatia, which are working on the national or international projects. 
Uh, this uh, latest list, uh, it's not exhaustive list because let's say it's the only tip of the iceberg, if you can say it like that, because it uh, only have the it, it only has the, the the data of the institutions that need to have the hosting uh, uh, agreements for the uh, foreign researchers, which basically means that all institutions that are uh, that have uh, accreditation from the Ministry of Science, and by accreditation I mean that they are hosting a lot of the foreign researchers, they, they, they don't need to be in this register. So it's said like that, it is only tip of the iceberg. And of course, the mobilities from EU countries since the Croatia entered the EU are also not included in this list. So basically, this is the list of the third country's participation in Marie Curie, um, in, uh, in, in incoming mobilities in Croatia. So this is the data. Uh, we can say by this data, as I uh, already said, it's not the incomplete data, but only rep uh, represent the available data. We can see in this chart that 34% of the mobility patterns since 2014 to 2020 are from the incoming of the research and of the, of the foreign researchers, and this basically means that the, the 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 majority of these researchers are coming to Croatia uh, thanks to Marie Skodowska key reaction and its project, and this is the 45 percent. Uh, the other percent of the 22 percent of the researchers who came to Croatia. Uh, they, they, they had the opportunity to participate in the new Phil Pro uh, co-fund project. And of course, the other data, 29%, are the data which uh, uh, represent the base of the hosting uh, agreements of the researchers. So on the other hand, 47% uh, uh, of the mobility is basically the outgoing mo mobility. And again, my Skodowska key reactions are the model for the brain drain, let's say it like that, for, from the uh, from the Croatian uh, researchers, with um, let's just see the data, with 82 per, uh, percent of the outgoing mobility, and the rest of it it's the it is the data of the Newfield Pro co-fund program. But uh, if I may stress out that the last uh, chart or the last part of the chart is most promising one because it is. Uh, regarding the, the the reintegration of the researchers uh, the, to Croatia, and and again, if we can see that these data are uh, are basically uh, collected, and, uh, and 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 one of the major instrument of 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 this program is the project of the Ministry of Science of returning Croatian researchers to their home countries, and this is represented by almost ninety percent and the rest of it is from the Madikiri uh, postdoctoral fellowships and the widening fellowships and the small amount is also regarding the new field pro so regarding the uh, incoming mo mobility from the researchers and nationality we can say that the, uh, that the most researchers are from Italy which is very surprising, and for me it was a nice uh, data showing that we are also uh, that that the, the Croatia is also a country that is recognized within EU for the uh, for, for the purpose of of attracting the the researchers in Croatia. The following is uh, India. Then we have sorry, I, it's, it's it's a little small. And then we have Serbia, uh, the United States, United Kingdom, Slovakia, Venezuela, Belarus, Slovenia, Iran, France, and Russia. So basically, the, 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 these are the top 10 na nationalities and countries. As I said before, we are also recognized within EU for the attracting the, the foreign researchers in Croatia. So regarding the mobility part and of the outgoing mobility of, of the Croatian researchers, I think this data is not surprising because the, uh, the, the Western EU countries are the most uh, uh, re re represented ones. As the Germany, United Kingdom, Austria, which is in the third place, Italy, U uh, USA, France, Spain, the Netherlands, and the Belgium is the top 10. 
So let me uh, show you just a small data regarding the creation participation in Malikili action during the Horizon 2020 program. Uh, in this program, in these seven years, we had 77 participation, which basically means that we had 45 unique uh, participation, which basically means that the 45 creation organizations were participating in Horizon 2020 via Madiska Kiri projects. Uh, in total, we have 48 uh, projects, which basically means that success rate for the creation participation was uh, 10 percent. And um, Malikiri projects are representing the 8 percent of the total Horizon 2020 participation. As you can see, the top 10 organizations are, are, are the organization which are uh, which are basically settled in Zagreb with the difference of the University of Split. But I need to stress out that these data are uh, also, uh, uh, if, if we have here, the, the University of Split is basically the third one, the, the, the third university with uh, participation in, in Malik creation in, in Croatia, because the first one is, of course, the, the the University of Zagreb, and then we add all the faculties uh, from the University of Rijeka, then the University of Rijeka is the second university with the most participations in Malikili projects in Horizon 2020. So regarding the mobility patterns uh, of the researchers coming through Malikili actions, we can see that almost 200 creation researchers are involved in Malikili actions, and the 70 researchers are the foreign researchers in Croatia, thanks to Marie Curie actions. Uh, what I would like to stress out is that the Marie Curie actions and the uh, postdoctoral fellowships or individual fellowships and widening fellowships are the great instrument, which is also good for the, for the mechanism of the returning Croatian uh, researchers back to the Croatia. And we basically have almost 58 percent of, of, of Croatian participation of this, uh, of, of this uh, 44, uh, which are basically, of, oh, sorry, the 44, uh, we, uh, we have the 44 uh, Croatian researchers that are involved in the project of fellowships in Europe, but from this 44, we have seven Croatian uh, researchers that are here in Croatia uh, regarding and thanks to the participation in the individual fellowships and the widening fellowships. Also, the most of Croatian researchers which are participating in Marie Curie Actions are the young researchers who are involved in the ITNs or the doctoral programs. And if I may say, they are very strong base uh, for the reintegration when they uh, finish their PhD for them to, to come back to the Croatia. And what I am uh, very happy to say that within the Malikeli Alumni Association, we have more and more uh, questions of, of the young re researchers of the possibility of, 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 of coming back to Croatia and for them to pursue their research back in Croatia. If you see the data which are shown by the by, by, by the years of the cold deadlines, we can see that the number of the incoming uh, researchers is increasing since 2017, uh, reg uh, re regardless to 2019. But I have to say that this is the good piece. And I would like to think that this is the good base for the participation in the Horizon Europe because now we have a more experience and now we are more prepared for the next uh, framework program. Uh, so uh, regarding the researchers who are going to Croatia or who are coming to Croatia by their nationality, the top 20 countries are the similar as the top tw uh, of, of the countries of the Croatia who are coming, uh, who, of, of the researchers. Uh, who are going uh, to, 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 to Europe. And basically, the, we have a lot of the Italian uh, researchers in Croatia. Then uh, we have the Venezuelan one, and the Venezuelan one and these uh, uh, gray ones are regarding the, the RICE projects. And these are basically uh, short-term mobilities which are lasting up to one year. 
and this is the consortium projects where the mobility of and the secondments are the base of the project. So it is uh, we, we need to uh, uh, we need to think about it when we present this data. And this uh, blue and the orange uh, are, are uh, uh, piles are presenting the ITNs and EFs, which are basically long-term mobility, and which means that 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 the, that the these researchers are here to 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 be employed by the Croatian organizations, and that they're here uh, they're here from the two to three years in Croatia. Uh, regarding the, uh, the the destination of Croatian researchers uh, uh, during the outgoing mobility, we see the, that the first one is the Germany, the Austria, Italy, Spain, and the Netherlands. As I said before, we also have the France and the Belgium. So, Western European countries are the 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 ones who are attracting Croatian researchers. Uh, thanks to the Net for Mobility uh, project, Net for Mobility Plus project, which is the the, the transnational project of Medicare and NCPs, we had a little analysis of the participation of the widening countries in Medicare reactions, and uh, I, I will take this opportunity to have a small uh, co uh, comparison uh, and how Croatia is standing in these numbers. As you can see by this chart, is showing that the, uh, regarding the participation of of, of own nationality in the in the Marikiri actions, uh, in the first part uh, of the Horizon 2020, uh, we didn't uh, stood so good, but uh, on the second part, from the 2018 up to 2020, we managed to accomplish a better. Uh, results comparing to the other uh, widening countries and comparing to creation participation during the first half of the Horizon 2020. So regarding the hosting, the researchers from the third countries, as we've, as we've been better in the hosting re, uh, researchers of the creation and nationality, uh, the, the, the opposite is uh, regarding the, the third countries. Uh, researchers who are coming to Croatia. As you can see in this data, in the first half of the Horizon 2020, we stood uh, a little bit better, but on the second half, uh, uh, we, we stood a little bit worse, which basically means that this data is uh, top up by the participation of the Croatian researchers. And the same thing is uh, with the uh, participation of, 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 of the hosting, the researchers from the EU 14 plus UK, during the whole uh, Horizon 2020, and basically the, the data showing the first half of the Horizon 2020 and the second half of the Horizon 2020 has almost the same results. So if we can conclude in, this, uh, in these three charts that the, the, the increase of uh, the, the decrease of the participation of the third, uh, of the third countries is, uh, is, is increased, uh, is, uh, gave the opportunity to increase the participation of the Croatian researchers in uh, who are coming in Croatia for the Mariki reaction. Also, within the same project, we had a little uh, uh, analysis re uh, re regarding the participation of the wider countries in Horizon uh, in, in, in Horizon 2020, and during this analysis, we had. Uh, uh, we found out some structural and organization uh, uh, barriers that are hindering the, uh, uh, participation in the framework programs, and one of the structural uh, uh, barriers is the lack of, uh, of, of uh, is the lack of the national strategy and the vision of participation in the framework uh, of, in, in the framework uh, in, 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 in these kind of projects. Uh, that uh, that the Vietnamese countries do not have uh, appropriate uh, level of national funding uh, to enhance the participation in framework uh, uh, pro programs. Also, the the lack of of, of the leading uh, university and the re re research or organization, and of course 
the, the low salaries of the researchers. Also from the other uh, aspects is the horizontal, uh, the, the, the organizational uh, aspects which, which basically show that all widening uh, that the all widening countries has the lack of the, prof uh, of the professional and administrative support for the participation in this kind of projects and, and, lo and, and low level of professional English the, and the personal uh, uh, competencies in, 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 in the, uh, and, and the capacity of the, uh, uh, of the ad, uh, administrative support. So, so basically, in this slide, you can see all the barriers that are hindering the participation in 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 frame of in, in in Horizon 2020, and 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 and, and these barriers are are the are, are the barriers that are represented in the whole widening countries. So, to uh, to to tackle these barriers, we also have the. The, 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 the national measures on how to facilitate the incoming mobility and how to attract the foreign uh, researchers first. Uh, due to our uh, uh, geographical form, uh, we have a uh, wide network of the research and scientific organization and in, 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 in each the organization we have the Euro access contact points, which basically means that, the, that, that, that this Organizations have uh, the the uh, the uh, uh, additional uh, administrative support for the incoming uh, researchers. We are having the uh, the boost of the in, uh, in investment in the research infrastructures. We also have the science, uh, the, the the scientific centers of excellence, and we need to stress out the importance of the uh, of the creation science of foundation and of course the importance of the project of the returning uh, creation scientists in to, 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 to Croatia and of course the Ministry of Science and Education uh, is providing the financial support for the creation organization to encourage them to participate in the framework in, in the framework uh, programs and we invite all of you and your organization to take this opportunity for the preparatory meetings for the future uh, consortium in the, in, 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 in the networking uh, for the participation in Horizon Europe. And basically what also we can do, we can promote uh, our, uh, our Croatia in the, uh, in, in the, uh, in, in the Europe, and in, in order to do that, within the Net for Mobility Plus project, we also have the country profile, and soon it will be updated and it will be published in this link. And as, as I said before, we have the Euro Access uh, uh, office in Croatia, and it's basically a great support for the incoming researchers in Croatia. So I uh, here I it, uh, invite you and your organizations to, to contact us if you have any uh, questions regarding the administrative and the legal support for the incoming researchers to Croatia. And that's all. Here's our, here are my contacts. Of course, you can contact me by email or by telephone, or you can just send the email to the questions that, uh, that uh, Tomislav showed us before. I hope I wasn't too boring with this statistical, da statistical data, but it needs to be shown. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> no, you weren't boring us. Uh, you've actually given us tons of uh, quantitative data to digest and uh, to think about our questions. Uh, again, for those of you who are following us via YouTube stream, I hope you've uh, written down your questions, so you can send it uh, once more on the email address uh, mcaa.hr at gmail.com. For those of you here in the conference, home, conference hall, you can uh, ask uh, questions later on. Um, our next panelist is uh, Vice Rector, is uh, Zelenica. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He'll be he'll be sitting. Um, I just saw my name on the display. Yeah. So. 
Oh, <laughs> um, then I apologize, um, Nevin. You can you can start if if, if, if you. If you're, no, please go. Um, please, uh, Sasha, you oh, can you can okay. start. So hello everyone. Um, as uh, we have seen from the previous data, uh, internationalization and incoming mobility is certainly one of the uh, things we we can do better with. Um, we at the University of Rijeka have recognized this as one of our priorities and therefore through various uh, measures we are trying to enhance these, uh, these figures. Uh, through the, uh, well, we did set it as one of the priorities of our uh, new strategy, 21-25, uh, uh, with a set of uh, key performance indicators uh, that we will be following. Uh, in this regard, uh, um, we have uh, also, uh, since we are one of the uh, couple of universities that have uh, signed the performance-based agreements with the uh, government of the Ministry of Science, uh, one of the key performance indicators that we have uh, agreed upon with the ministry is also the number of incoming uh, mobility uh, uh, figures or, or people coming in and we are stimulating this uh, incoming mobility then also with uh, financial means. We do have also uh, other uh, means or other, other uh, uh, instruments that we dedicate to these uh, activities. Uh, we have stipulated uh, a figure of honoris professor, which is uh, an honor that we, uh, through our Senate, uh, acknowledge uh, scientists of our origin then, then uh, dedicate part of their time and uh, work uh, at the University of Rijeka. We have also a, a program of uh, guest professors or guest le lectures which also uh, serves in attracting or using part of the resources for time of, of uh, uh, renowned researchers to, uh, to enhance uh, not only the mobility, obviously, but also the, the research outputs or teaching as well uh, at the University of Rijeka. Uh, as you may have heard, uh, we have established also an International Scientific Council uh, formed by uh, 10 of uh, our well-renowned uh, scientists uh, working abroad, so Croatian scientists working abroad from Ivica Džiki, Jelko Ivezic, uh, Danica Kragic, uh, Igor Mezic and others, which also then uh, help us in uh, widening our, our uh, brainstorming actions or actions that are aimed at developing oral performances and thus also that related to, to internationalization and therefore also to uh, mobility. In all of this, uh, we are aware again that it's one of the things that uh, does not depend only on institutional members, uh, institutional measures, but also those at the national, uh, national level and international level. So uh, we are proud to be part of two uh, um, university association, European University Association. One is UFE, so Young Universities for the Futures for the Future of Europe, which is one of these European un University Association in the first call. Uh, this association was the best uh, debt with the best marks. Uh, it is constitu constituted by 10 universities all over Europe, so from England uh, down to Croatia, uh, uh, Poland, and so on. Uh, and therefore, also there, uh, one of the work packages of this important project is also uh, dedicated to staff mobility. So also through these programs we are um, attracting postdoctoral uh, students or, or employees uh, to our in universities and assuring financing for these positions. Uh, and there are in plan through the UFA network other more ambitious uh, programs that would uh, then um, 
enhance the numbers of, of uh, mobile researchers uh, in this framework as well. We are also part of the Yeru network, which is a uh, European, uh, young European research university network. We had the pleasure that our rector, Madam Rector, Professor uh, Prig Samarja has become uh, two days ago the president of this association and their uh, in both associations, so that, uh, in UFE, we are part then together of several Horizon projects, and uh, through uh, Yerun, uh, we are part of several uh, working groups and working also on some Horizon Europe projects, where the development of academic careers uh, with relation also to the mobility of researchers is uh, high on the agenda. Again, as said, uh, all of this uh, obviously is part not only of our endeavors, but uh, of a much uh, broader, uh, broader set of measures. You know that uh, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, in her agenda for Europe has uh, said or, or defined that uh, uh, innovation happens only when people from different backgrounds and perspectives blend together. And in the, uh, the overall program of the new era, so European research area, one of the four priorities is indeed free circulation of knowledge, uh, researchers, and, and technology. So uh, we do hope, again, but uh, we do have to acknowledge that uh, incoming mobility of researchers is uh, only part of the story, so Croatia uh, attracts only 017 foreign students per 1,000 inhabitants. Uh, Slovenia has roughly 10 times as many, and the Czech Republic roughly 25 as many. So uh, again, the, the story doesn't end only with researchers, but it's, it's, uh, it's broader than that. Uh, uh, in these, obviously, uh, we have some good examples also in the uh, industrial or economic sector. You know that uh, Infobip or, or Rimac or others are planning big uh, infrastructural developments that these will be built in uh, smaller towns or, or bigger villages as you wish. So Kerestines or Vodnyan, uh, so places where you have uh, two or three thousand uh, stable or, or uh, native inhabitants, and now we'll be confronted with probably the same number of foreigners coming from all over the world and uh, bringing their families and, and building their future in these communities. So it's, it's an important uh, social and, and, and sociological and societal uh, experiment, if you wish, or, or development for Croatia. It's something that we have experienced, obviously, uh, through the big number of tourists that come to Croatia, but they come for a week or two and then leave again. So this will be people that will be living here with us, that will enrich, enrich our culture, our cuisine, our languages, if you wish, even our uh, skin color palette, if you wish. So uh, all of this, I believe, will uh, stimulate also the, us as researchers or, or scientists to be more open, to be more cosmopolitan, to be more, uh, more prone to, to openness and to, to uh, yeah, uh, be part of all these trends that, uh, that uh, Sandra was, was showing us. Uh, in this regard, uh, obviously, the, the support of the uh, national, uh, both strategic uh, documents that uh, Tomislav was mentioning, but also the measures that Sandra was mentioning is important. Uh, the returning scientist program is certainly well accepted. Uh, it goes on for probably now uh, 15, 16 years. Uh, the University of Rijeka has always used all the available uh, quotas or funds uh, for these uh, purposes. So each year also in the last three or four years, we have uh, enriched again 
our uh, resources, our staff number by one to two percent of of uh, researchers of Croatian of Croatian descent coming back to to Croatia, which again it's changing uh, uh, the cultural at, the, at at various levels the way in which we do science and we perform uh, as Vanessa was saying this morning. Uh, it is often associated with administrative and other issues, <laughs> not to say problems. It's not always easy. Uh, they are some, sometimes seen as, as a competition, somebody that, if you wish, even sometimes as troublemakers because they tend to question some uh, established practices. Uh, often the, the only argument that you here uh, or are confronted with in this regard is, but we have always done it in a certain way, so why should we now change something just because you came from wherever and think that uh, things can be do, uh, done differently, which obviously is not, not uh, always a pleasant, <laughs> pleasant thing to hear when you uh, really want to, to, with the best intention, to, to propose something new or different. Uh, the administrative help that, uh, again, Sandra was uh, mentioning, is also, also something that we should certainly improve. So, um, at all levels, from the national, so the, the health insurance system, especially for non EU nationals is, is always a question uh, that they obtaining all, of, all the working and other permits is also not always easy. Uh, the number of uh, kindergarten or, or schools uh, where you have prob uh, programs in English is also very limited, so this is also something, but also at the institutional level. Uh, Several things can be improved, not only because of returning scientists, but also because it's a uh, homework for for us living here. Uh, you know, I mean, it would be nice that when you come, there is a chair that waits for you or a PC or something, so that you can start working uh, the 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 password and, and the the, the uh, network account and so on and so forth, so that you don't have to lose or, or uh, invest days or weeks in, in uh, till you get, again, the, 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 the basic working means by which you can uh, be productive. Obviously, um, again, um, this homework exercise doesn't stop only there. I mean, all the issues that bother us obviously bother even more people coming from abroad, so the, the, the pervasive corruption, if you wish, the, the rule of law, which, is, uh, which has deficits uh, that we are all aware of. Again, uh, all of this can be improved and should be improved because of us living here, but this is also part of the story or part of the environment that then would be far more attractive also for either returning or foreign uh, researchers that uh, we hope to attract to Croatia. Again, examples, good examples are here. This returning scientist program does work uh, through various means. Obviously, uh, the Marie skrodowska kiri program is certainly a good example. Uh, more and more foreign researchers are coming. Uh, for example, our Center for uh, Advanced Studies of uh, South, Southeastern Europe uh, has a very developed uh, fundraising scheme through which they again attract a large number of uh, doctoral, doctoral and postdoctoral students uh, that spend uh, six months or a year in Rijeka. Uh, we have a pleasure that one of them has uh, gotten an ERC grant and that he will uh, most probably do or, or continue his work on this ERC grant in, in Rijeka and so on and so forth. So again, there are good examples, there are examples we can build on, but I would stress one, once more, there are also uh, several issues that we, 
Croatians living in Croatia have to solve because of us, and that then will create a more favorable uh, environment also for others who want to come here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice Director Zelenica. Um, in the meantime, uh, I was uh, informed we have received uh, many questions for Martina Hartl. I uh, thank you uh, for them, and I will send those to her email address, and you all participants will uh, be informed uh, on her answers. So keep up with uh, the questions. Our last panelist is uh, Professor Barisic. Um, So, dobar dan svima, uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I would like to thank Tomislav for the nice introduction he gave uh, at the beginning of the panel. Uh, so, uh, as, I, as he already said, I'm a double affiliated. I'm working between University Zagreb, uh, Department of Physics, and uh, uh, Solid State Physics Institute at Tel Wien in Austria. And uh, I will share a little bit a personal view on the mobility uh, from, uh, and the experiences I got uh, by doing this mobility. Uh, so my path started in uh, Zagreb. Uh, I get my education here. Uh, I finished university uh, at the Department of Physics. And one thing I was not fully conscious back then is that I got excellent education. Uh, the, I was really competitive. I was, again, not aware of that. And moreover, this education was for free, which was also not uh, conscious at that moment how rare that is. Uh, then, uh, after Zagreb, after finishing my studies uh, with the title of engineer of physics, I moved uh, to EPFL Lausanne, Switzerland. Uh, and this is a very good school. Uh, I did my PhD there, and uh, I also got introduced and uh, got to know during these five years I spent in, in Switzerland how a little bit the Swiss system works and how uh, the science is educated and uh, why EPFL is such an excellent school. And uh, there are various reasons for that. I will try to uh, select you one of them or a few of them. Uh, first of all, uh, the high school teachers, uh, the professors, and the scientific staff are exceptionally well paid. So, professor at uh, universities has 10,000 10, euros and plus, in fact, I will not, in netto, uh, the salary. High school teachers are also not far away from the number of 10,000. Uh, so, they do care and they do appreciate the researchers and scientists. Uh, however, uh, although the salaries are across uh, Switzerland very high, it's not that everywhere at each university you find excellence. So in smaller cities, you have smaller universities, uh, even in bigger cities. So there are two centers I would uh, select. It's ETH Zürich and EPFL Lausanne, uh, which are out out outstanding places in Switzerland. At Uni Geneva, for example, which is a much bigger city than, 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 than Lausanne, uh, they are nice, good researchers, but still EPFL is leading. Uh, and they're like 100 kilometers apart, they're on the same lake. Uh, so, so not only money plays a road, uh, a role, but also you need to have a critical mass of people working at, at a particular place uh, because researchers and scientists and ex are looking for excellence. So that's what we're looking, and that's where we'll go even for the lower money. Uh, so, after getting my PhD and staying a little bit longer as a postdoc at EPFL, uh, I used a uh, fellowship. Uh, I indicate on the right uh, part uh, of the slide uh, fellowships I got. So, I got a uh, HRZZ fellowship. I think it was uh, from Zaklada, but I'm, I'm not completely sure anymore. And it's a very convenient fellowship. You, I got three or six months. Uh, to visit, and I really cherished uh, these relations toward Croatia because I always thought I would come back. And you know, you need to talk to people, show yourself, discuss with them that they know where you are and what you do. Uh, uh, because getting a permanent position everywhere on the planet is very hard. So it's it's not an easy to stay in science. 
So after spending a few months in, in, in Zagreb, in Croatia, at the Institute of Physics, uh, I moved uh, to Stanford, and I moved to Stanford thanks to, uh, to, in fact, I, I did a very nice PhD, so they uh, suggested me to apply for the Swiss National Fellowship, and I got the Swiss National Fellowship. Uh, and uh, this is brilliant. So uh, I think that this is at the right moment if uh, you, after a PhD studies, if you get the money and if you can select the place where you go, that's the best, play, best thing that can happen to you. Uh, so uh, I, 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 I decided to go to Stanford. Uh, and there I was immersed. I stayed for two years at Stanford, but I was also coming uh, over the years for extended periods, few months here and there. Uh, and uh, there I was emerged, as I said, in the American system. I was in the heart of the Silicon Valley. Uh, uh, all these big companies was around. And I can see from the first row, you know, how this function, how uh, high tech and high education works together. Uh, on the other hand, I also saw the, the deficiency of American system. You know, it's publish or perish. We all know that and the pressure to publish whatever is huge. And then there is overselling. So writing project after project where you oversell the product is also not good. It's in fact, in my opinion, devastating for the fundamental research in many respects. And one needs to be extremely careful uh, uh, about these things. On the other side, America is the place, or US is a place where you can really, if you manage uh, to put yourself in the right place, achieve things which you cannot achieve anywhere else. Just look at Elon Musk. What Elon Musk did is impossible to do anywhere else except in the United States. Croatia, with a case of Rimac or Infobip, uh, Infobit or Infobip, I don't know, uh, are following a little bit in the direction. There are, there are exceptions to the rule, of course, but, uh, but, uh, but in states you have a bunch of companies in local valleys which develop from the garage and they can attract, there is a venture capital, uh, you can get it if you have a good idea and push it through and collect more and more, which opens you possibilities uh, to, to reach Mars. Uh, okay, so after uh, doing uh, two, two and a half years at Stanford, I moved back again uh, for a few months to Croatia, uh, which allowed me again to keep uh, the, the, the contacts and a profit from my family and not to get lost in, in the big world. Uh, and after these few months uh, spent in, uh, in Croatia, uh, I went on the Humboldt Fellowship. Uh, in fact, I went uh, without the Humboldt Fellowship, but on the way to there I got the Humboldt Fellowship and I stayed uh, two years on the Humboldt and one more year in Stuttgart uh, at the University of Stuttgart, which is very close to the Max Planck Institute. There is very good communication between the university and, and, and the Max Planck. And uh, there I saw a German system working, and the German system is, is very well organized. You know, things are inside right. Uh, they function very well, and uh, uh, they also have, beyond, beside Max Planck, there is another set of institutes which are uh, oriented to the applied research, and they do a very nice job all together. Uh, uh, and after finishing, uh, I mean, these two years, and I stayed a little bit longer uh, in Stuttgart, uh, I moved uh, to uh, Minneapolis. Yeah, I forgot that almost. So in Minneapolis, I moved because that's, uh, uh, I had some colleagues, I have some you know, ongoing uh, collaborations, and in fact, it's a very good place. Uh, it's a second materials department uh, in United States. But again, I saw a little bit Midwest, let's say American Midwest by, by being in Minneapolis. It's, uh, the climate is uh, barely supportable. It's super cold winters, super hot summers, and super moisturous summers. Nevertheless, uh, there is things to see, things to learn, but also uh, things to learn and not do. do. Uh, after uh, uh, U.S., I mean, I already got Marie Skodowska uh, Curie Fellowship, and I went to Paris. Uh, I mean, what a better place to go with Marie Curie Skodowska Fellowship than to Paris. Uh, in fact, I was working in CEA, you can see it down, it's Centre Energie Atomique. That's the place Marie Curie was working. I also have colleague at SPCI, uh, that's the second place with Marie Curie 
uh, was working, uh, and uh, finally I won went to Pantheon, uh, where she, 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 she is buried, and uh, you can pay your, uh, give her the honors to, to, to visit the place while you are there. And when I moved to France after Germany, it was quite different. France is very different, so it's very disordered, let's say. I mean, in some senses, uh, uh, it resembles to Croatia. <laughs> so the Croatian system is very similar to the French system. And, you know, I was complaining about it, I was not happy about it, but then, in fact, uh, what really opened my eyes uh, was a colleague from uh, United States, Chinese origin, so exceptionally success-oriented. That's in the culture. And he told me something which really made me think. He said, look, Nevin, you know, here in the United States, we are all the time running, we are pushing, we are working day and night, and really, in the States, working hours are long. You don't take many holidays. And he said, but, you know, I, I go to France, and everybody's relaxed. You know, they come to work, they drink a coffee, they don't come to work, some of them never come to work. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to control. Uh, I, I mean, nobody controls. Uh, however, if you want to really do the best experiments, we go to France. And that's what you're looking, in fact. You don't care if you have 1,000 regular scientists. You want to have few exceptional scientists. They change the world. They are the game players. They modify the world we know today. And you can even name them. You know, all of us know those who really brought something exceptional and then everybody followed. So one should be careful not to throw away with the dirty water also the child. Okay. Uh, so, so one needs to be careful to keep the system sufficiently free that exceptional people have time. That's the key. In France, you don't have so much money. But if you're good, if you're interested, you have time. There is no pressure on you. So you can think, you can modify your experiments, you can work them carefully out, and then you can get, have best experiments on the planet. So after uh, Marie, uh, Sklodowska Curie and Paris era, uh, I went to, in fact, I wished to come back to Croatia, but it didn't work out. As I said, uh, getting a permanent position, it's not an easy job. Uh, I was always counting that I would come back to Croatia, so I was not bothering about finding a permanent job earlier. And I found myself in trouble because I said, oh my God, uh, there is no opening in Croatia. I need to find a place. I will be jobless. And then I started to apply. And uh, luckily, I sent several applications. I think 50% of them, I came to the final interview, and I had several lucrative offers, uh, most of it from the United States, uh, to, 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 to work there. And I decided to go to Austria. And when they asked me why Austria, I mean, my colleagues, in the, my current colleagues, but back then, um, members of the committee, they know, you know, world is very small, so they knew that they have other offers, and that they're much better. And I said, our reason is because you're close to Zagreb. Okay. So I landed in uh, Austria. And uh, then with time, uh, there was no, uh, I mean, there is this returning program of Croatian government. And uh, the colleagues at the university, uh, at the Department of Physics, are really interested. And I thanked them. And they said, look, we'll work it out. They worked it out. And now I'm juggling between Austria and Switzerland uh, for various reasons. Uh, it gives me more opportunity to research and also think that uh, networking is a really important thing. And I think that we need to create a critical mass uh, of scientists uh, working together. It's not easy to achieve it either in Austria. It's not easy to achieve it either in Croatia. But working together, maybe we can do something. Uh, so now I'm most of the time this red spot stretch on the highway uh, between Austria and Vienna. I make a tremendous amount of kilometers and slowly I'm getting tired of it. Uh, okay, so this was my path. Uh, uh, these are some of my experiences, but these are my scientific experiences. So, you know, you go there to learn. That's the message. You use the mobility 
to, to, to develop some topics, some themas. And these are the materials which I was addressing. These are different categories or materials. They exhibit very different behaviors. And uh, I made a short list of concepts which I also get acquainted. These are terminology from the solid state physics, so I will not uh, bother you with it. Uh, but there is a long list and, and they're really interesting and they really enrich my knowledge uh, 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 about the science I'm working. Uh, then, also, I'm an experimental physicist, so uh, I learned, being in different labs, how to make and produce different homemade experiments. These are a list of it, and uh, I can say you that most of them, we currently also have them now in Zagreb, because I managed to transfer the knowledge uh, to, to, to Zagreb and working with them in, in Zagreb. Uh, and also, I had, a, for me at least, a fascinating uh, opportunity to work at large facilities. Uh, so on the left hand side you see a synchrotron. So uh, you are in a big hall and essentially you can see electrons at the speed of light uh, rotating on front of you and they behave like a small sun. So they shine you the light which you can use later for the experiments. I was in neutron uh, facilities, so in the nuclear reactor, and it's really amazing, you know, when you're entering nuclear reactor, a door, tick like, a door tick like this, close after you, you know, and after they close, you see the, the core of the reactor, essentially, and you see, oh, if something goes wrong, you know, it will just make poof. <laughs> but on the other hand, you know, you are just so close to the nuclear reaction and you're doing some experiments, so no many people can see that. And then I'm a frequent user of high field facilities, so we can produce Tesla, uh, 100 Tesla fields, you know, and uh, this is exceptional uh, and very useful for research, for example, to cool a magnet in Tallahassee. Uh, you, you run a tube large like this of water uh, to cool it, and I, once I was running the experiment at 40 Tesla, stable field, and then the control room told me, look, Nevin, you need to stop because the tank, which is bigger than this hole of water, is boiling, so uh, you need to stop. Uh, City of Tallahassee consumes more, less electricity than the, uh, the, 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 the magnet facility itself. Uh, okay, uh, this is uh, regarding the research, and this also is one way how people like to present uh, success. Uh, that's how evaluators of different, uh, different funding agencies or different uh, grants will evaluate you. So. Uh, I publish Nature's Advanced Materials, Nature Physics, etc. I have 70 plus publications. I didn't look. I think this is an old number, so I should check it. I gave probably, I wrote 60 plus seminars, but I'm probably close to 100. These are invited seminars, invited talks at conferences or, or, uh, or, or distinguished institutions. I don't know, Cambridge University, Collège de France, etc., etc. Uh, but is this a good measure of experience and uh, excellence in science? Uh, I will answer you with the following uh, slide. So this gentleman uh, which is smiling at you is uh, Peter Higgs. Uh, maybe you know it for the Higgs boson. Uh, the CERN is uh, founded to found whether or not, uh, the, I mean, the, the big accelerator, uh, there is a boson, uh, Higgs boson. And he said the following, Aujourd'hui, je n'obtiendrai pas un poste universitaire. C'est simple. Je ne pense pas que je serai considéré comme assez productive. So what he says is that today he would not get a post, a, a, a position. Why? Because he would be considered as not enough productive. The person who got the Nobel Prize. And this is something to think about. Albert Einstein didn't wrote many papers. The question is, did you wrote one which means, okay, and if you wrote one, which means that's it, you got it, okay. Uh, so these are my final slides. Uh, so mobility, my uh, view on the uh, mobility from my uh, uh, from my experiences. Okay, this is I didn't do any statistics, uh, it's just my impressions. Uh, so definitely, uh, one should go around and see the world but you should choose wisely, okay? Many people go and go and finish in bad groups. They look very glossy on the paper, but what is in essence, you need to wonder where it's good 
and whether or not you want to spend or you know, do part of your life or direct your life along this direction. So I strongly advise you to talk to your senior colleagues and you know, discuss with them whether a certain group, certain topic would be good. On the other side, I would like to say also that the state, departments, PIs, have interest to help you. There is some strategy, there can be some strategy, whether you wanna force one type of research or not, so we can use it. And in this sense, this, what, what, what Swiss gave you the fellowship, what Swiss gave me the fellowship, was exceptionally valid for me. Okay. And I did consult some of my colleagues asking whether it's a good lab or not good lab, is it a good topic or not good topic. Uh, so, so in my opinion, there is place for two, you know, that we can use this mobility really as a state to move forward our science in the direction we think it's good to move. Uh, second, one should return home. Uh, you know, there is no place like home. That's already uh, uh, enough said. But I also would like to say that in states where the tuition fees are close to 50,000 dollars per, 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 per year, which are essentially close to my salary of person who was teaching at this institution. So education is, should be for everybody free, that's my opinion, but somebody needs to pay for it. And you didn't get it just to forget who paid you this education. Uh, it's challenging, but that's why we are doing science. We want to bring back, we want to move the society, and we want to bring it to, to another level. It's beautiful, and in my opinion, that's really meaningful. You know, in states, we are one of many. Here, when you come back, it really matters that you came back. And then finally, if too much mobility, uh, so I'm probably the limiting case, or on the other side, that I really did quite a lot of mobility, it's exceptionally hard on the family, and that's what state regulators should think about it. And it's exceptionally hard on the person who is doing mobility. You know, to change every two years, it's like jumping without any parachute. You know, what happens, happens. And after two years, you can be in empty, and you don't have a job, and you're in big trouble, okay? And this insecurity is, for many, hard to sustain. Especially if you have a kid and a wife, or a husband who needs to move with you, and what he or she will do while you're at work, working 24-7. Uh, so my general uh, opinion about policy development, uh, uh, again, from my experiences, I would like to emphasize, not every shoe fits every foot. In fact, in fact every foot is different, okay? Every country I visit has a different funding scheme, and all of them, you, you, one cannot just copy-paste to a particular feed. From all of them, there is something to learn, and some of them are closer, some of them are further away. And also, this is very general, this is not for Croatia, it's in general, you know. One should not try to solve problems from the past, but, you know, people have problems for many years, and then even this, these problems are not existing anymore, you still try to put a solution for the problem which is kind of not relevant anymore. Uh, but rather look ahead and make it right for the time that comes. And very interesting times are coming in front of us. You know, the, uh, the technological evolution is absolutely fascinating, the speed of it is fascinating, and it's really hope for all of us to deal with that. Uh, this is more related uh, to Croatia. Uh, so create the right atmosphere, where knowledge is appreciated, where the work of professors, researcher, teacher is respected. So um, this is a little bit the message from Switzerland, okay? Uh, I'm not saying that we should get Swiss salaries, uh, but I find it that Croatian salaries uh, are not competitive, even closely. A postdoc, a Croatian postdoc, or if a foreigner comes from Croatian postdoc salary, he cannot sustain, he needs to rent the apartment, uh, he needs, uh, it's insufficient probably to keep, I have a postdoc from India uh, with a wife and a kid and he struggles, I, it's, it's really hard. Uh, 
Sec uh, so the third for the creation is that uh, one needs to create an ecosystem. So critical masses are important. So if you, again, on the example of Switzerland, which is similar size, uh, there are small universities, they, they cannot manage. You really need to manage, and I'm, in this sense, we should uh, not forget that Austria is close, Slovenia is close, Hungary, Hungary has excellent scientists and beautiful scientists. Uh, so, you know, mid-European uh, networking could be a help, and personally I'm trying to push things in long direction on my personal connections and funding, essentially. But this is something I think uh, that, that, should, uh, that should be also thought of. Uh, administrative duties and similar duties on scientists are in Croatia, but also across the world, over flooding us. We barely find time. We are working all around the clock. And this is, in some sense, even you know, uh, at the limit of sus sustainability. How the Croatian projects are run, it's terrifying. Personally, as Vernesa, I'm not sure that the, the reasons are completely the same, but could be. Uh, I didn't apply to HRZZ. I cannot, simply. I cannot put Excel tables, arrange Excel tables, predict which conference I'll go. Usually I get an invitation for the conference three, four months in advance, a year in advance. I never get it four years in advance. It, it's simply impossible and many similar things. Uh, so the load is absolutely uh, uh, too high, but not only in Croatia, everywhere else. The, we, one should really think how to reduce it. And then uh, what for Croatia is essential, that applied and fundamental research must be connected. And in my opinion, uh, you transfer the knowledge by transferring the people, human resources. We should get more students uh, which are going to the high-tech companies, and then this loop will start to work. Uh, and finally, I will tell you, I discussed this issue with various people around the globe, and uh, uh, the question I always ask them, you know, uh, how to create a place which is an excellent place, uh, and I will tell you the answer of my colleague. I mean, he's a very senior colleague. He retired. I talked to him 10 years ago. Uh, so he was a Cambridge professor and, uh, from UK, and he went to Australia for sabbatical, and Australian government asked him uh, to, to you know, summarize for them how to make a university of class of Cambridge or Oxford. And, he, and I said, and what did you reply to them? And I said, I just wrote a paper of A4. I said, yeah, that sounds really interesting. It's short, so it's potentially good. And, then, and can you please tell me, you know, what are your... Uh, main points, and I will repeat them. He had three main points. The first one, hire excellent people. Okay, that's the key. Okay. Spend time and think, not by metrics. Really think which person is exceptional, which science he's doing, whether he's bringing something new or not bringing something new, or he's just following the fashion. Provide them some money, not too much. They don't need so much money. You, they need you know, to have offices. They need to be able to buy a chair and a table without begging endlessly. Uh, they need to get some infrastructure. So if they really think that they should buy certain equipment, they should get this equipment. Uh, and they should be able to travel when they think they need to travel. And after providing these two things, don't ask them anything. They know what they need to do. You hire them because they're excellent. So you don't need to control them anymore. Or you did a mistake in your hiring, and that's your mistake. It's not their mistake. Reconsider. And that's the last thought I would like to have and the message I would like to deliver. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Nevin, for your insights and straightforwardness. Now it's uh, time for the discussions. Uh, by the way, uh, thanks everyone for the questions that are keep dropping in into our email box. Before I ask the audience to join, uh, I would like to ask my panelists uh, with some questions. Um, I've prepared a question for State Secretary Shushak. Uh, he's not here, but uh, I will read it out nevertheless uh, Perhaps some of you might want to say something about it. Many sectors uh, complain about the lack of workforce in Croatia. 
On the other hand, uh, Croatia has even a surplus of uh, elementary and secondary school teachers. But what about research sector? The National Development Strategy 2030 doesn't say anything about it. Do we know? Do we miss researchers or uni and university staff? Or are we going to miss them in the next decade? Just to compare, UK de uh, declared they are going to miss 150,000 of people in the R&D sector up to 2030. I'm afraid the same tendency is uh, in Germany, Austria, and other developed countries where Croatian researchers often go to work. So instead of incoming mobility, are we going to see even more brain drains in the next years? If you would like to give our thoughts, please welcome. Well, Croatia with 2,000 researchers per uh, a million inhabitants certainly is one of the, the a country at the lower end of the uh, world uh, rankings in this regard. Obviously, uh, uh, it's not that simple. Uh, we mostly uh, produce researchers to renew the, the research system, so the, the public research system. So the the universities and the public institutes. Uh, in Europe, roughly half of the PhDs go to work in other sectors, from the public sector uh, outside of the research sector to the uh, industry and the entrepreneurial sector. In the US, obviously, this is even more. It's roughly 80%. So it's linked, obviously, also to the level of our economy or the level of the services we are getting from the uh, public sector and so on and so forth. So it's not that easy. Most probably we will and we are. Uh, we have a deficit in, in the number of researchers. Uh, there will be, there is and there will be a brain drain. But as uh, one of our Indian colleagues has put it, uh, brain drain is better than brain in the drain. So uh, it's not uh, tragic if people go out or go to other countries, but uh, it would be good if some of these, the ones that we uh, need, come back. So again, Maris Klodowska Kiri is one of the instruments. Uh, some of the fellows are coming back. Again, uh, the quotas for the returning scientists are being very welcomely used at the University of Rijeka and other other uh, uh, university, public universities and research uh, institutes, others are more reluctant to use those. Um, people circulate, and this is again, uh, as I was referring, one of the policy elements at the European, uh, at the, uh, European Union level. So they will uh, circulate even further, as uh, Sandra was uh, showing us uh, there are other countries uh, which also uh, do not have enough places or, or from where other uh, also researchers are, are uh, leaving. Italy is, uh, is a good example. So we are not alone in this. Uh, in many uh, issues or, or instances, we have similar problems with the so-called EU uh, 13 countries. So there is a clear um, innovation, research, digital, in whatever terms you name it, uh, divide be between the EU uh, 15 up to yesterday. Now it's EU 14 and the EU 13 countries. So uh, those that entered the European Union after 2004. Uh, so. Uh, mm, in this, in this uh, European fora, we can exchange, and we are often uh, as uh, at the national level exchanging experiences with these other uh, 12 European countries. We are coordinating, we are pushing some common initiatives towards the European Union. Uh, you have seen that in Horizon Europe, uh, now 3.3% uh, roughly of the funds will be dedicated to uh, the so-called widening or, the, yeah, staircase to excellence instruments, so they, they are helping us or, or they have acknowledged that we have structural problems. 
uh, in Horizon 2020, this was 1%, so it, it has grown by 300%. Uh, uh, so, but uh, when they did the analysis, why we are attracting or why we are less successful in, in attracting Horizon uh, or uh, framework, European Framework Program funds, only part of the problems were structural. Uh, there is what they call a cognitive distance <laughs> in, in official European Union doc documents. So really, uh, our way of approaching problems, uh, it's, it's not productive, if you wish. So uh, that's what some, some people attributed to Einstein, other to other. Uh, a renowned scientist of the past, if you always do the things in the same way, you will always get the same result. And so, again, if we are not happy with the results that we are getting, and obviously, however you measure uh, it, uh, our research output is not at the level we, we would like it to be, then uh, we have to accept that we need to change some things. And we have heard also uh, today for, from Renessa, from Sandra, from uh, our uh, Austrian colleague from Neven, uh, some of the recipes which are not hard and with, which we all do know <laughs> what they are. But we are very resilient in accepting these, these messages. So uh, a little of what I call mental elasticity <laughs> would help us in this regard. Thank you. I mean, I cannot talk uh, in the name of the institutions because I'm just a professor and uh, doing the research, so I also don't know the numbers in details and statistics. Uh, but what I wish to say is that many things are about the critical masses and creating the right ecological system. People want to come, especially young people, where they think that they can do something exceptional. That's what attracts them. Uh, uh, so I was surprised, for example, that Switzerland has a problem with brain drain in the in, in banking sector. So the best of them are going where to New York, and it was not clear to me why they go there, you know, comparing to the standard of life in Switzerland or Zurich and, and Manhattan in small, expensive apartments. And then I realized they go there because they want to go somewhere where they, where they believe it's a perception that something is going on, that, that, is, you know, that, that what they do is the top of the top. And that's where they want to go. So one is to create a broader ecosystem. And in this broader ecosystem, it's really important that you don't just have it university and think about university. Uh, as I said, I'm very happy with the education I got at the Department of Physics in Zagreb. Uh, but uh, you, you have a problem, for example, all these facilities I mentioned, there is no single such facility in mid-Europe. There is no Hungary, there is no synchrotron, there is one synchrotron Electra in Trieste, yeah. but that's it. Uh, there is no high field lab. That's, I can talk from physics. I, I cannot say for all the branches, but in physics there is no, and there is no neutron facility. Okay. But it's not only that they don't have these facilities, so I don't need to travel far. That's not the point. The point is that these facilities are a working place for researchers. And you need these researchers. That's the part of the ecosystem because they contribute to the life of the society, of scientific society. You know, there are your review panels. They are colleagues you can talk. You have a problem, you go there and you discuss the issue with him. And you, if they're far away or if they're not part of your kind of broader team, you don't talk to them, and you don't come anymore, and that's uh, that, that's, and then also with companies. So we have some high-tech companies, but I have a feeling also that these high-tech companies just start to understand that in natural sciences they have an excellent pool of people, that they will solve them the problems they even don't know that they have. Okay, so it's so, so there are several loops which you need to put in a circle simultaneously. Uh, that, that I think uh, function. I mean, uh, in this sense, yeah, Rimac, which we heard a lot over many years now, he is also saying, yeah, I started the auto industry and auto industry was a zero. So you need to, again, he created, he managed somehow to create it. So one is to uh, keep in mind that he's 
just the building he's building now is 200 million euros, private money. And science should follow. I mean, if you look, we, structural funding is really currently quite good in Croatia, but is it enough? Can we try to mid-Europe uh, build some of these facilities? You know, we are an excellent place on the planet Earth where you have five capital cities in the 150 kilometer diameter. So this is, I don't know, uh, Budapest, Vienna, Ljubljana, Zagreb, Bratislava. And there are other capitals which are not very far. And in all of this you have exceptional researchers. Really, you know, our students even don't know how good these people are and how good people here are. And I think that we have a great potential uh, and that we should uh, profit for it, for, from it. And the same is for, for, for business. So when I was in Silicon Valley, I talked with one Croatian guy, and he has a company, he had a smaller company in Croatia, like, uh, and I asked him, but why don't move all your production from Fremont? Fremont is, in, so, you know, it's expensive. You need to pay big salaries. And he again told me something which is really interesting. He said, yes, if I move the whole production, if I have a problem here in Silicon Valley in the production, I know that I have one of the top person on the planet who can fix this within 24 hours. I will pay it a lot, but he will come. If I put everything in Croatia, I have a problem, I need to bring it from there. I will pay it, no problem, but he needs one month just to find the time to come. And I cannot afford to wait one month. So you need to have experts nearby at neutron facilities, at this facility, that facility. You can consult, ask, and this will also pass the, the, the technology. So that, that's, that's more or less it. That's how Grenoble was created. You know, they put uh, the, the uh, also Stan, uh, Stanford and Silicon Valley around the Stanford. The same recipe you put, you give some money for companies, the smart students and smart people grow, they have ideas, okay, I don't want to do any more science, doesn't pay off, and, but because I have a better idea, and they bloom. And that's a little bit how it was done in Grenoble, Paris, but it's, uh, sorry, Grenoble and, and Silicon, it was not done in Paris, so Paris struggled. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, if I just may uh, uh, also give my uh, point of view, I completely agree with Professor Zelenik and Professor Badisic. Uh, but I also think that our research organization needs to be more visible and they needs to stress out the internationalization of, of, of their uh, 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 research teams and uh, internationalization structures. Because we need to see that participating in EU projects such as the Horizon 2020 or the Marie Curie and uh, the Horizon Europe, it's not the additional burden to them. It should be the opportunity for them to 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 network and to transfer the knowledge within the partners in the in the, in the consortium project within the Europe. But also, I would also like to stress out the importance of the supervisors, especially the supervisors in Marie Curie actions in the doctoral students. Because I think it's frustrating. Uh, I'm not in this position, but uh, it's 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 quite uh, reasonable to think so, because you have the the Malikiri fellow, which is PhD student, and he has almost the same salary as the supervisor uh, who is supervising him uh, ju uh, during the project. And the supervisors also should be uh, 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 sh sh should have some compensation for that also. And for them, it also should be the thing that it, this is also the opportunity for them. It's not the, the burden for them to participate in medical reactions. So we also need to have that kind of incentives for them also. Thank you. Uh, my next question, I think, uh, will go to you, Vice Rector. Um, just two months ago, uh, the UK has delivered the a very important document, uh, the R&D People and Culture Strategy. It is uh, an interesting document uh, because it brings together the development of R&D workforce with the quality of work environment. Having in mind that the University of Rijeka is uh, considered by some uh, as one of the most progressive Croatian universities, for instance, with the exempl exemplary uh, ethical codex, what do you think, uh, Sasha, if we want to increase incoming mobility, 
do we need first to create, to make the creation strategy of development of human resources in research sector? Well, as I said, well, on one hand, uh, well, we have been one of the first, but uh, far from being the only one that have entered the human resources strategy for researchers and have this seal of uh, research excellence uh, uh, that was renewed again, uh, the first one in Croatia, which uh, is the University of Rijeka, is the first one in Croatia who has achieved it. So we are very active in this sector, and as, as I was mentioning before, together with our uh, friends and colleagues from the EUF and the Jeroen uh, European University Networks, uh, we are very active in developing uh, academic career um, plans, and, and because uh, um, the landscape is changing very fast. So. Uh, open science is certainly one of the big topics which is uh, changing at the basic level, at the fundamental level, how we evaluate science and uh, both institutions and the single or individual researchers. And so in this regard, again, through several European uh, framework programs or projects, uh, both Horizon 2020 and, and we are applying now for Horizon Europe, we are, again, working with institution which have gone further than, uh, than we are in this regard. We are piloting some of the actions uh, in this regard and we are building uh, such, such an environment. Obviously, in our case, it is quite uh, strongly constrained by the national regulation. So the, uh, uh, the rule book for the uh, advancement in, in science and the the rules of the uh, Rector's Conference for the Advancement in uh, Science and Teaching, uh, which are, again, creating a rather strict framework. But, again, uh, it doesn't uh, prohibit us to, to go beyond this and to have additional, additional uh, criteria and to, again, learn from the best. Uh, as far as I know, uh, in the Netherlands, they, they went the furthest uh, in this regard, so you may have uh, read a month or two ago, for example, that uh, the University of uh, Utrecht has abolished the, uh, the uh, impact factors and uh, bibliometric parameters as the only or, or the main criteria in evaluating researchers. The University of Maastricht, which is one of our uh, which is leading the UFA uh, network, uh, is working very actively on their, uh, their uh, career or evaluation framework. And again, we are in close collaboration with them. We are learning from them. We will be piloting some of these uh, initiatives also within the University of Rijeka. So yeah, we are, we are there working on it. So first of all, I mean, I speak again from a particular corner. So, Department of Physics in Zagreb is, uh, in my opinion, a very good department. I don't have any of this problem of uh, not being accepted or we don't accept Marie Curie Fellows or we really look and starve for, so for good people. And I can only say the best about my colleagues. They're very flexible. They have full of understanding and this return uh, program of Croatia was exceptionally useful for me, but also some other colleagues which are also returning to the Department of Physics. So we are very good at attracting people who are abroad. Uh, however, there is, we have a big problem. So, you know, when you return to Croatia or when you come to Croatia uh, with uh, accomplished scientists, you want to run something, but you don't have labs, and you don't have people. And it's really hard to establish these two things. And you cannot afford, you know, a few years uh, of vacuum to start something because you will drop out. Uh, and, and this is a big, big issue. It was not in my case because I was lucky. I got a Marie Curie Fellowship, uh, Marie Curie Award, uh, ERC grant. Yeah. I got an ERC grant, so I had 2,200,000 euros, and I was also lucky that we have the, in Croatia currently the structure of money. So my case is. I was exceptionally lucky, let's call it that way. But this is not standard. So one should really think how to 
when you are hiring a person, also give him a certain amount of money that he can really equip his lab, and this will motivate many departments <laughs> to look because uh, you uh, bring the person and you get entourage of this person also working, so you're really benefiting. If you just give him a room, an office, uh, he will slowly die off. Uh, he will not. He will lose his uh, compet uh, competitive, uh, competitiveness. And uh, regarding of ethics in general in physics, we had a uh, few issues. So there is a very known scandal, Batlock Shun scandal, about forging data and publishing ten, ten natures in several years. Uh, um, and there are other such scandals in, in, in the fields of natural sciences. Uh, but I think this is one of many negative consequences of measuring people by the number of papers, by the number of conferences, by the number. You, you try to make them a stars. I mean, they need to make themselves a stars, and, and then you, you're living in a virtual world. You're overselling stuff, and that's really not a good thing to do and not a good thing to follow. And definitely when you do hiring, uh, you should not uh, only rely. Of course, if a person never published anything and all his papers are irrelevant, yeah, okay, he will drop out. But if somebody has 100 papers or 1,000 papers, you should, you know, a person who has 1,000 papers, you should wonder how he managed to do that. It's 10 papers per, per year, let's say, uh, even more. <laughs> how you can write them? <laughs> and I know colleagues who are publishing 30, 40 papers per year, and I know how it's done, and that's not a nice business. Thank you. Uh, my question uh, for you, Sandra. Uh, Twelve EU countries uh, supported the European Commission's MSCA Seal of Excellence program. From a researcher's point of view, it is indeed a great way uh, of promoting incoming mobility. For instance, if your research proposal exceeds the quality threshold, uh, but cannot be funded due to budget limitations. Uh, national countries can take over your uh, proposal and you can uh, get, uh, get it funded eventually. Uh, do you think Sandra Croatia should join uh, these, uh, this, club, uh, this club of uh, 12 countries and support the seal of excellence of MSCA? I think the Seal of Excellence is uh, one of the great uh, examples on, on how to attract the, the excellent researchers and how to increase the visibility of your institutions. And I know it's uh, the process of obtaining the Seal of Excellence, it's quite hard because uh, we need to face the lack of the national support system and the national system of funding. But it's easier for the countries where, where there is a, a great pool of the national funding of science, such as, for example, the, the Sweden or even the Slovenia, who also has a seal of excellence, which is uh, complemented with the funds of the national uh, funding. But th there is also opportunity for the co-funding mechanism of the seal of excellence if you uh, in, in implement the seal of excellence, and you can also co-fund this uh, project with the structural funds, but then we opened some kind of Pandora box, let's say it like that, because it's not easy to do that. But if there is any uh, opportunity for us to have a national funding with the Seal of Excellence, I think this will be a good uh, increase of the Croatian participation uh, in the framework programs, uh, especially in the Marie Curie actions, because we see in the last few, as, as you saw in the chart, we are getting more and more projects, and the project proposals are getting better and better. And each year we have a more project proposal which are beyond the 85% uh, of the evaluation. So they could, there should be opportunity for them also to be funded, to attract some kind of the new knowledge uh, to creation, and the transfer of knowledge. Uh, but also the great opportunity of Seal of Excellence is that you don't need to follow exactly the rules of the Horizon Europe or the Horizon 2020, because if you have the national funding, then you can create your own rules on how to fund uh, this uh, kind of the proposal. So you don't need to, uh, to, to have the exact amount of the fellowship that was uh, in the project proposal, for example, for Marie Curie Reactions. It can be lower and it can be uh, funded by by the countries themselves. Thank you. Now in the last part, um, it's time for you 
um, the audience to ask questions um, if you want to raise something. Uh, wait for the microphone. Um, oh, Dragomira. And please introduce ourselves. Hi, hello. My name is Tanya. I am now on my second Marie Curie fellowship. Uh, the first one was in Belgium, the second one is in Croatia. And I'm in social sciences, which I think is important to say because there are some other factors related to attracting uh, fellows into, into Croatia. So when you are applying for the, in the, for the individual fellowship, one, one thing that you are routinely advised is that you choose an institution which is prestigious because it's supposed to be a matter of fit, but the more prestigious institutions are giving you better chances of having your fellowship accepted. So in this scenario, Belgium is much more prestigious than Croatia, and Central Eastern European countries are always less prestigious than any Western European countries and give you little, a few chances. In this context, in terms of policy, I think it would be very important to think about evaluation panels and who, who, which scientists are making those evaluation panels. So I think it's, it's my suspicion that you have an issue here with the politics of knowledge, where you have people who are mostly from Western Europe creating a little circle of which institutions are the best or most prestigious, and then who are the best, uh, who are kind of evaluating the proposals from who are hosted by these countries as better. And I think the problem is that people do not have a, a role in decision making if they're not part of the evaluation panels. And I have a suspicion that people from Eastern and Central Eastern Europe are not really part of the evaluation panels in the, in the numbers that we would need to have to have a role uh, in, in, in this problem. Thank you. So this is... This is a rather long question. With, uh, with a, does anyone want to add something? I mean, it's a very good question. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, I mean, many things uh, in life in general works like gravity. So you have a big mass mm -hmm. and everything spiral uh, to the mass, so uh, you can fix the boundary condition as you want, it will still go to the mass, and that's a big problem for for country like Croatia uh, and for the institution of Croatia, uh, how, how to work against the gravity, and that's a very relevant problem, I think, yeah, and we need to be smart about it. So, and we are not only who are, need to be smart and not just follow. Uh, so when Bologna was introduced, I was in Stuttgart back then, and I was talking to Dean, uh, I should not take, say names, uh, so I talked to somebody very, I mean, who, 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 who was involved in the process, and I said, what do you think about it? I said, ah, we use Bologna to change what we want. Mm -hmm. As a tool, as a pretext to, to, and he said it without blinking an eye, you know, so, and so, so again, if you want to be good, uh, then you need to think, how to make, that's the challenge, you know. So come back home, include yourself in the processes if you can, uh, if you're willing also. Uh, but I see it as a real challenge for all the scientists who went abroad, how to make these things running also, that we also become center of the gravity. Uh, maybe we should also kind of collaboratively work with, uh, with, with Austrians or, you know, they also suffer, the, it was mentioned, but by, by, by Martina, yeah, Martina, uh, that they also suffer from the brain drain. So, uh, and if you look at the uh, list of countries of the incoming in Croatia and outcoming, they're not the same countries. Mm. Okay, and it's it's quite clear the level of one and the other. Okay, so our students are really competitive abroad. Thank you. More questions. The email, our email e uh, inbox uh, is uh, full with questions, but for Martina, so we'll be uh, delivering those questions to her. Um, if you want to ask something more, now is the time before the wrap up. So if 
there are no more questions. I'd like to thank you all for coming, for joining us. You too. And uh, now we'll have a, a break before the next panel discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you.